Hello everyone and welcome to my next Let's Play series. As you can see, we'll be playing Legend of Grimrock. This game is a dungeon crawler-esque game with updated modern graphics. You can already see this is pretty much what the game looks like, the background here. Um, we'll be uh, dungeon crawling, picking up loot, destroying enemies, um, and we'll be going at one tile per turn. Well, not really per turn, but we'll be moving in, in a tile-based manner, much like a dungeon crawler. I haven't played many of the uh, the games that this that Legend of Grimrock, uh, Grimrock comes from, uh, the vein, those vein of games, but I have played a little of this. Um, I, I'd say I've played about two hours, um, and I've gone through the first uh, two levels, maybe a level and a half, just to get a good feel for the controls and the mechanics and good strategy to go for so I don't get my ass handed to me. Uh, because I do have a feeling that this is going to be a fairly difficult game. Um, we might end up saving a lot and maybe even reloading. Uh, we're not going to be doing a hardcore run through where if we die we, we're going to keep going until we're absolutely defeated. Um, but without further ado, uh, we are going to get into the game and this should be a lot of fun. Uh, so we're going to go for Grimrock. Uh, we don't have any other dungeons to choose from there. We're going to go for normal difficulty. We are going to create our own characters. And just to let you know, there's an old school mode. And basically this mode doesn't allow you access to the map. Basically it says, hey, you need to get out your grid paper and pencils and write down the map yourself. So it's old school in that manner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a party that's much like the default party you get if you don't generate your own characters. And I'm just going to... I was thinking about, you know, doing some kind of naming system, maybe going Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach or something like that, but I mean, that might work, but uh, I'll just generate, and I can't really come up with uh, good names on my own. I'm not that creative, but uh, we'll go with a human fighter as our uh, attack person, and we'll give him, uh, we're going to give him some, a little bit of athletics to get his strength up. And let's see, how many points do we get? We get, okay, we have two left, so we'll go for armors and swords there. And we'll give him some traits. We will give him, we will give him some, let's see. We'll give him athletic. And we will give him skilled. And let's divvy out our attributes here. We have strength, dexterity, vitality, and willpower, which are which are tied to the various aspects of our character. So we'll go for more strength, a couple more, and dexterity. I want his strength fairly high. Can we max it out? Yeah, we can max it out, but I don't want to completely max it out. I do want a little bit of vitality as well as well and willpower is uh, is the energy but we don't really need to worry about it uh, I don't think at least what I've played it affects your energy which is all your actions uh, fighting and casting spells take up uh, use energy so um, there's not like mana or um, rage or uh, energy going with those uh, World of Warcraft uh, um, set stats or set, set uh, pools of energy there and we could choose a portrait for our guy and uh, I think we'll stick with the, the default portrait there so this guy looks good um, hopefully I'm not crippling myself um, if I find that I am then I might just cancel this let's play and, and go back from the beginning but I think we're pretty good here actually oh we do have oh we, right we get three extra skill points because we are skilled so that's what that does. Um, so we will actually bump that up, and then we'll bump. Um, let's see, we'll bump up swords as well. We'll get closer to that strength plus one. So our first level up should be to get that strength plus one. Okay. Next, our next character is going to be another fighter. It's going to be a minotaur, and he's going to be our smashy smashy guy. And we're gonna make him. That looks like a good uh, portrait right there. And we're going to bump up his armors. Oh, oh, we only get one skill point. That's right. Um, we actually might want to slap skilled on him as well. Let's do our traits. We know I do want him to be aggressive to add the attack power. And aura 
is fine. Let's see. Headhunter. Oh, that's interesting. Plus three for each skull carried. But I, I didn't encounter many skulls in the first two hours, so I don't think that's really necessary. Um, we got tough, fist fighter, evasive. Let's go with skilled. We, I'd like to get those skill points. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for armors. And we're going to give this guy, let's see, axes, maces, swords. Let's give him... Let's make an axe type character. Even though we get gain access to a mace early on, I think I'm going to go with an axe uh, for this guy. And we'll see what happens. And let's divvy out our attributes. I want to max out strength. And let's see, give him a little bit of dexterity and more vitality. That looks good to me. And we'll generate a name, Sandcrack. I want to make names that are easy to pronounce. So we have Gimzam and Sandcrack. Now we are going to do a rogue. And our rogue is going to be a back row character. You'll see in the game we have two front row characters and two back row characters. The two front row characters take the brunt of damage. And the two back row characters take a little bit less damage. So we're going to have our rogue and our mage uh, in the back row. So we're going to make our rogue... Um, we are going to make our rogue a uh, missile type guy. He doesn't need dodge daggers, and we're going to give him a little bit of assa assassination. Uh, we do want an insectoid. Um, yeah, we do want an insectoid mage. We do get a plus four to willpower. That'll help us a little bit. Uh, we do get less uh, skill points than a human, but I do... Think. And we also get minus 15 food consumption. You actually have to eat food in order to be able to perform actions in this game. But it looked like early on there was plenty of food to eat. And so we're going to go, let's see, vitality is health, dexterity, and strength. We don't need to worry about on our character here. What we want to worry about, we're going to bump up vitality a little bit and then max out. Yeah, let's max out willpower and then just put the rest in vitality. And let's pick a portrait here. This, this one looks good. Looks like an insect. Insect. Uh, yes, of course, it looks like an insect. He's an insectoid. We'll generate his name. Dama sounds good. And we're going to give him Aura for more energy. And what's another good one here? <laughs> Strong Mind. Let's go for that. So we won't get extra skill points, but that's alright. And, oh, this guy's a mage, not a rogue. Um, and was I actually... I might have actually been talking about... Did I just do a brain fart and go from rogue to mage? I think I did. I apologize about that. <laughs> um, uh, let's do our mage first. Let's go for... Um, let's just dump... Uh, well, let's dump two into Spellcraft, and then I know we get access to a fire spell early on, so let's go with fire there. Wow, that was a really weird brain fart. Um, <laughs> I was talking about the rogue, and then all of a sudden I switched over to the mage really unexpectedly. That was really weird. Okay, anyway, so we have our mage of Dama, and now we're going to do a rogue. And like I was saying, wow, that was so weird. That was, a, wow. I'm never going to hit that. I'm never going to live that brain fart down. All right. Like I was saying with our rogue, our rogue is going to be, yeah, I think I was talking about back row and I brought up mage uh, because our mage and our rogue are going to be our, our back row. So that's probably what happened. At least I hope that's what happened. Okay. So we're going to have a, um, a lizard man rogue actually. And let's give him a cool, that looks like uh, a dinosaur. That looks good. Uh, lizard man rogue. And we're going to have him be a missile and throwing weapon person. Uh, we do get access to throwing weapons early on, but that is a lot of. Uh, you can see there we have, if we gain, if we have four, uh, if we have throwing weapons up to level four, we get strength. So it takes a while to get these to where you get your first bonus. Um, let's actually look at traits first. Let's see, dexterity, energy. 
I think dexterity is linked to okay it's accuracy and invasion and let's see we want it would be nice to let's see let's go with yeah let's go with um agile and uh, evasive why not that sounds good so he'll be in the back row kind of dodging any extraneous actually that might if we were gonna put a rogue in the front row maybe we won't we would want to go with those but let's actually put some attack power on and um, let's also give him some let's give him skilled as well since these the bonuses look a little heavy at least or um, a little expensive so these are some uh, so we want to go with uh, missile and throwing I think early in the game and we want to go for dexterity first three four and then we'll give one each to assassination and throwing weapons and let's go with some more vitality slightly more strength and then knock all the rest in dexterity and can we actually we did max out uh, dexterity so that that looks good and we'll generate a name zarve nope lodar that sounds good all right so here's our ragtag group of uh, prisoners um, you know i'm really not sure if this is the best party you know the attributes might be off um, but you know this is this is just a game um, maybe we won't be able to this isn't probably the um, the most talented most skilled party in the land who will be able to conquer the legend of grim rock in the most uh, quickest way but I think we'll have fun doing it and uh, if we find that we're dying too much you know we'll just say okay we'll come back to this game later or we'll we'll see we'll see what, we'll see what happens all right so that's enough of that. Let's actually get into the damn game. All right, so in the beginning we have some exposition. Mount Grimrock. A towering spire looms above the clouds, a weathered rock that has stood tall for ages, longer than histories of men have been written down. It is a desolate place now, only remembered when things need to be discarded and forgotten. An airship struggles to gain altitude as it floats toward the peak. Four prisoners bounded, bound by heavy chains emerge from the ship. The court accuses them of terrible, treasonous deeds, but by the grace of the king, their crimes shall be forgiven atop Mount Grimrock. Their final trial is at hand. Numerous prisoners have received their pardons here, yet none have returned to live their life in freedom. They are at the very top of the world, and below them only darkness and justice awaits. Reminds me of a scene from some weird uh, Greek movie. Anyway, as they are plunged down the open maw at the peak, their crimes are absolved. Everyone before them has perished in the guts of the mountain, but will you be able to lead them to the dark and to freedom that awaits them? That waits them? That waits them? Huh. That waits them at the base of Mount Grimrock? Did somebody not do a spell check there? I think it's awaits them, right? Okay, and now we have the title card, Legend of Grimrock. Oh, and that last uh, little exposition scene there. <clears throat> this is Sparta! Okay, anyway. So uh, you can do a tutorial, and I've already done the tutorial, so I won't uh, go through that. Um, but basically, we can look around, mouse look, by holding down right and looking around. We can also turn doing that. We can do W, A, S, and D to strafe, move forward, and move back. And then Q and E, turn us. Now these are, l these, um, and I'm going to move that mage over there since I'm used to him being over there. Uh, these controls are a little bit weird to get used to at first, especially if you haven't played these kinds of games. And e even if you have played these kinds of games, I'm not even sure this control scheme was the same as those old school kinds of games. Alright, so, and we can also go into the map by pressing tab. And we can uh, go to the next page, previous page, as we go down into the levels. 
and we can also add notes which is cool I might actually that was one thing I did forget about um, in my last video so if we see like uh, a door we can't get through we might want to put a note or you know things like that now if we were if we were playing old school we wouldn't have um, access to the map so it's a very cool map nice and high def it'll it'll give us good orientation to where we are going all right, now this is text on the wall. Choose your fate, perish in this cell, or pick up the torch. All right, well. All right, and that's the end of this Let's Play. All right, yeah. Dumb joke, I'm sorry. All right, and we can grab that torch off the wall and put it in our hands. Now, torches do uh, eventually wear out. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking as many torches as I can. Uh, in fact, actually, I just want to throw them in our back row. Actually, it does... Trying to see if uh, no, nope, the lighting doesn't change. That'd be kind of cool if it did. And I'm pressing uh, one, two, three, and four to access our inventories here. One, two, three, four. We get an inventory screen and a character card where we can place all our items. And we get our uh, what do they call this tab? Like a character tab uh, with all the stats and the resistances and our food and our load. So we do have a load. We can only carry a certain amount based on strength. I would gather. Um, it looks like, yeah, strength, most definitely. Um, and we only have a certain number of slots as well. Um, let's see. Uh, also, our left and right hands, we have the attack power and the accuracy. And we all have our food bar, like I was saying in the uh, character selection screen. We have to eat. If it gets down to yellow, I think it takes more. Uh, if it gets, let's see, actually, if you're starving, the bar turn, okay, uh, the bar turns yellow when you're hungry, but there's no penalties, okay, so it's just kind of like a warning, and uh, if you're starving, it turns red, and we don't regain health and energy uh, as we play or when we rest, and resting is done, we can press this uh, Z button, the Z, the three Z's up here to rest, or we can also hit R, which is what we'll be doing a lot, so if you see uh, the screen go blank like this, we are resting, and we just press escape, or we can just press R again to get out of that, and then we have our skills here, so you can see the breakdown of uh, all our skills and the bonuses we get at every level. Um, I did read somewhere that it's a good idea to just max out one or two of these, um, because the bonuses you get toward the very bottom are just awesome so I might be doing that uh, I probably should do that I should listen to the advice and just do it shouldn't I yeah uh, so when we level up I'll start to look at that um, you'll notice our mage has glowing hands that's because uh, and in order to perform <laughs> actions we right click on our hands here uh, so, we'll, so we will attack with the thing that is in the hand so we would be attacking with the torch here, you can you notice we got that can't reach uh, message because these two guys are in the back row. If they had a spear, it that is a reach weapon, so we could put a spear, and we will once we get the spear coming up here. We would put a spear on this guy's hand, and then we could right click, and we'd be actually be able to reach, which is very very useful. And then, like I was saying, our mage can cast spells. Um, we have to punch in a combination of runes here, and then press this or uh, this blue ball of light here in order to cast it and as we go forward we'll find scrolls that tell us uh, how to cast but we in order to cast as well we need to have the correct level of uh, magics you can see at level four for example for air magic there's a spell but it's question 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 because we haven't yet found that scroll and uh, like I was saying before, these are the skills, and you can see the bonuses at each level, and I was talking about that. All right, we look good here. Um, our food and energy are up here. And, yeah, so let's keep going. Now we can interact with the environment by pulling chains and pulling things off the wall like I was doing. And one thing to note, there are uh, secrets in this game, and it kind of it looks like from in my, my initial findings to be more of like a pixel hunt like find the little switch on the wall and press it in order to get your secret so I won't be going out of my way to search for them especially since I've only played about two hours of this uh, I will know a couple of the secrets but I won't know all of them and so we have some clothes here that I was picking up and we're gonna start wearing them so we get plus two protection from each of those which is good protection uh, decreases physical damage of attacks much like all RPGs and we have our mace here and we did specialize our uh, sand crack here 
with uh no we didn't go with maces actually we went with axes so once we get some axes that'll help i wanted to switch things up i'm gonna grab that and give it to old lodar here i'll try to remember the names that make, make it more interesting all right traveling along traveling along and now we get to our first puzzle now what we can see here is when we step on the pressure plate the door opens oh we step off of it it closes and, of course, we can interact with the environment, so we get a rock, and we can also place the rock. So that's a simple puzzle. You know, just, this is basically a tutorial level. Let's check our map. We can go left, right. We'll go uh, right here. Oh, and we found a key. And we'll give that to uh, our, what's his name? Giz, Gimzam here. We'll put it in his hand, because I know we're going to be using it very, uh, very soon. And like I said before, torches do eventually wear out, so that's why I'm collecting them. And you can also collect rocks and then throw them. So I will also be hanging on to all the rocks I find. Oh, and this is just a little, uh, you can see on the map, it's just a little roundabout here. So we will use that brass key on the tumbler and we'll get through. We see some text over there. We see a door here with a keyhole. And we're going to strafe and loose rock. So this is, and this is again, it's more of a tutorial level. You look around, oh, what do I do, what do I do? Oh, this looks different. Oh, we press it. And you'll find, at least what I've found so far, is that a lot of the secrets are a lot like that. And we get our key. Excellent. And we'll take the torch. We always take the torch if we can. And if we remember, we use the key save the game. I think we're going to encounter our first enemy very soon. And we'll take that torch. Now that torch being there and this little enclosure makes me think that there might be a secret here, but I'm not going to spend much time looking for it. Oh, and now we have our first enemy. So what we will do is we will let's see. We'll throw a rock at him. Come up here. We'll smack him. Smack him. We're going to be moving a lot. At first I didn't really... Uh, try to move a lot uh, and then I was just getting smacked so hard uh, it was pretty tough so if you kind of move along they can't attack you and I think I might have just blocked myself no I didn't that's good what's really good is if you find a square room uh, you can kind of do a uh, <laughs> you can do a little uh, a dance with your uh, <laughs> with your enemy that is kind of lame but it's just kind of the way it works and I'll show you that when if we find a square room or a room that has at least four tiles that are adjacent to each other and that was actually let me go look at that that's a snail slice that's food it doesn't uh, regain our health but we regain our food bar by eating that and so we are heading in the right direction let's see actually I'm gonna go this way first this is, yep, just a standard loot room. And you'll also notice if we have rocks equipped, and that was actually the rock that we threw, and it was equipped on Lodar here. If we moved into that space, it actually gets picked up and re-equipped by us. So that's a really cool feature. So we'll take these boots and these leather pants and this knife, and we'll equip the knife in our right hand. We will upgrade our pants, we'll put on the boots, and we'll give our pants to our... Sandcrack Minotaur over here. Always best to put pants on your Minotaur. I'm sure we all have underwear or something on, or I guess prisoner's garb. All right, let's open up this door. And it looks like we have another, oh, we have some throwing knives. So I'm going to actually give that to our rogue and give the rock to our mage. That's fine, as long as we have one open glowing hand, we can cast a spell. And I do know one of the spells right off. Uh, we actually might not be able to cast it, though. No, we will. No, actually, we need... Yeah, I think we need... Uh, let me try it. Yeah, we need uh, one more skill point. That might have actually been a mistake. Are we really going to pay for it this early in the Let's Play? That would suck. We shall see. All right. So we have some throwing knives and some throwing stuff. Let's go up here and we'll attack. So now we have our square room, so I'll show you what I was talking about there. 
So see, he's he's kind of he doesn't know where to go. Doesn't know where to go. Now we got this, this. Oh, but now we're kind of stuck with that guy. All right, we got that. We're not losing too much health, so this is all right. And it's early on the game. This is just kind of how it goes. All right, we killed him. Let's pick up that snail slice and give it to our minotaur. Keep attacking. And there we go. That wasn't too bad. And we picked up our knife because it was embedded in that snail. And we'll give that snail slice to him. Doesn't really matter where you put these snail slices because they aren't energy. They aren't. Uh, they don't increase your. They don't really uh, restore your health. So it's not really important. And like I was saying before, we gave the throwing knife to our rogue because we did specialize in a little bit in throwing weapons. So he'll be better off using that. Now let's go over here. We have a keyhole in the wall. We don't have that key yet. So let's search around. All right, we got a bit of a loot room. We got a baked maggot food. We got a rock that we can give to our mage. We got some sandals that we can put on our minotaur. And we have a loincloth that reduces willpower, yes, but it increases attack power. So I'm going to give it to our Lodar rogue friend. And let's go ahead and equip these. All right, everything looks good. I have a feeling with all the torches we're collecting, we're gonna we're, we are going to run out of space real quick. So, actually, I think I'll throw this one away, and we'll consider one row of torches to be plenty. All right, so we need that key. Let's go down here. And before we open up that grate, let's go down here. All right, so we have uh, some pit root bread and another rock. That's very good. Now we'll go in here. All right, uh, to close the pit, something needs to fly. So you can see there's a pressure plate over there, and we can throw rocks. And that's how you solve that puzzle. So we'll give that key over there. And if we were to take this rock and then step over here, we'd fall in the pit. We don't really go anywhere, but it goes to second level, and then there's another teleport to get us back up here, since it's just basically one of those, you know, it's a tutorial level. Uh, so they're just explaining the game mechanics. So we'll head over to the door that requires the iron key. We'll use that. The first time I saw this thing, I was just thinking, oh, I'm going to get hit with a fireball. But I didn't. So that was good because that would have been lame. All right. I can hear snails moving around. So we got to use this to close that out. throw our knife and throw a rock use these get out of the way go back here rock knife uh, oops, that didn't work ah. yeah there we go so we're we're beating those snails back pretty well we have to you know dodge a little bit but that's how you gotta do it. And before we go over there, I'll take a look over here. I believe there might be some loot or perhaps even a secret. No. I can kinda hear something. Do you kinda hear that? It kinda sounds like a secret, but I don't think I uh, ever saw a secret uh, tile over here. No, I don't think I did. Alright, so let's go this way now. Oh, and I think. Oh, I see that guy. Throw that and throw that. Smack that. Smack that. Throw that. Smack that. Smashy smashy. And slashy slashy. Alright. Pick up our rocks. Pick up our knives. Oh, and you can also... Yeah, I noticed the lighting did change. I was like, what the hell is going on? You can see our torch is a little less lit. So what we're going to do is we will... Let's just replace that. And now we're in the dark, but we shall not be for long. There we go. And that torch is okay. Now here's our first scroll. So we'll give that to our mage, and we'll open it, or we'll hover over it. And you can see this is our scroll of fire burst. So it tells us which rune we need to press in order to activate it. But we do need fire magic too. And then if we open up this, you can hover over fire magic. And oh, it actually doesn't discover that spell. It still shows question marks. I guess until you perform the spell. 
it won't work. Okay, so we have a line cloth. Let's actually just leave that there because I know it's we're not gonna it's not gonna be good for anybody. But we do have a tattered cloak for evasion, so we'll give that to our fighter, our human fighter. And just looking around for any switches. No, nope. I'll just do brief. Wait, what was that over there? Oh, rock. We want the rock. Let's take the rock. We are actually gonna need the rock pretty soon. So we'll do that. Throw. Throw. Oh, that wasn't good. That's not good. That's alright. I don't think. Yeah. We'll be alright here. Oh, well. <laughs> here comes another one. Ah. Come on. Come on. Okay, we're stuck in here. What we should have done is just stayed out there so we didn't get stuck so we could evade these guys. So that's alright. They aren't gonna. I don't think they'll do enough. Yeah, he didn't do enough damage to really cause a problem. So we've got some snail slice. Oops. Looks good. And blue marble, uh, blue gem rather. Oh, and I didn't explain. Uh, I didn't go look at that puzzle to tell you what it was about. And this one took me a little bit. There's actually this little button here that allows you to do that. But if you step on this, there's a problem. So what you need to do is actually throw, throw that. Nope. Oh, I know what we need to do. Uh, we need to throw that. Whoops. Then we need to hit the button. And we can actually get that rock back and head over here. And we got that rock back. Let me take a look at the map. Everything looks good. We're going to head in this direction. And I'll actually show you what puzzle we're trying to solve now. Uh, if you look here on the wall, heal my sight to open eye sockets. And we actually have one of those blue gem so we will actually put that in and we need one more blue gem or oh one more gem but it actually does turn out to be blue so and we're about to take a look at our next enemy type and I wonder if smashing him with the torch is a good idea might be a better idea here because he is like a um well, that did eight. Let's see what, uh, I'm thinking he is like a, he's a, uh, uh, no, he's a plant character, so smashing him with the fire might do the, do some good here. Yeah, there we go. And he dropped a herder cap, so let's take a look at that herder cap. Okay, it's just another consumable for our, uh, food bar. There should be another one in here. Yep, there is. And I don't think attacking him with the uh, <coughs> with the torch did any better. Oops. And remind me after this battle to go over rest because we do kind of need it. So, oh, this is another way to demonstrate. See how he's, we can kind of dance with him pretty much all day with this, and he can't really do a, a damn thing. So we can just keep going and going. But, you know, that's just how the mechanics of the game work, so. And we're missing, like, nobody's business. There we go. Nice critical there. Picked up our knife. Got our herder cap. And we'll pick up our rock. Pick up our rock. Looks like we have to deal with another. Oh, another two even. Let's throw over here. Smash you. Throw a rock. Whoop. Gotta be a little bit faster. And it might be useful to have that fireball spell from our mage, but. It doesn't look like we'll be too disadvantaged, which is nice. I thought that that might really cost us, but we're definitely going to go for that attack next. Oh, there we go. We kind of wasted a uh, wasted a attack there, but that's all right. And we have another herder cap. So we'll collect that. Get our rock back. We'll smash this guy. And now we're in this four by four little block area, or two by two rather. That's probably how, how better to describe it. And we can actually throw. And the controls are weird, but once you kind of get used to them, you can pretty much do this like little circle thing and really mess somebody up. 
pretty well. And there we go. We got a knife back. Another herder cap. We got a rock over there. And let's. Oh, we got another herder cap, is it? No, it's a grim cap. Let me just take a look at that. It is a delicious mushroom commonly found in damp underground caves. Yeah, that's where we are. The legendary master chef of Northampton Palace values them highly as an important ingredient in his finest soups. That sounds lovely. But we are stuck in this god-awful dungeon. If only we could go to Northampton. Is it Northampton? There's a Northampton near me. I'm in Massachusetts. Hang on one second. Uh, no, no, Northampton. Oh, not Northampton. Well, that's all right. It's close enough. Northampton's a weird place. All right, we got another grim cap. And uh, look around for switches. They're usually pretty obvious. I won't spend a lot of time. And we have a tar bead. I think this is our first healing item. Let me open up our inventory. A rare herb that grows in swamps and other moist areas. This dungeon is very moist moist which is known for its potent healing properties all right and i thought i've tried to use that before actually let me save the game and try to use this yeah i'm trying to maybe you need to go like this no hmm maybe i need to give it to this guy let's see if i give it to him and he uses it maybe no hmm. maybe you need to mix it with something perhaps all right, what are we opening? Oh yes, we're opening the, and let me make sure I didn't get any items missing. All right, we're opening this cell. Oh, I didn't see this before. It's another little switch, all right? And we get our blue gem again. Did I actually use this? Did you hear that? Over here. Uh -huh. And we get a secret found with a little, uh, nice little jingle. So we have cave nettles. We have a dagger. And we have another tar bead. Let's take a look at those cave netters. A fairly common cave nettle, rather. A fairly common herb that flourishes in dark places. It is used to treat snake bites in a prepared form. Okay, that's good to know. So yes, I think we do need to prepare these somehow. Uh, which we'll probably need some kind of mortal and pestle, I'm guessing. Mortar and pestle, rather. So that was cool. I never saw that secret before. So that's very cool. And it appears on our map, but it doesn't show up as like a highlighted room or anything like that all right let's continue on we're going over here to place the final eye awesome. and our first whoa that was close okay this is our first major enemy and good thing we're in this room because we can pretty much duck and weave whoops that was not good whoops that's not good either ah, i gotta use the right okay i gotta just <laughs> Alright, we're going to take it slow with this guy to make sure we kill him. Because we're going to be strafing. So it looks like our knife doesn't do too much. In fact, it almost does nothing whatsoever. Ah, that wasn't good. If you're good enough, and I'm not good enough yet, you can pretty much get away with absolutely taking no damage. Our knife did pretty good there. If we had fire, that'd be really nice, but we don't yet. I bet this guy gives good XP, though. Pretty much just... Oh, we got a critical there, and we just missed him. That was a good move. And we are also picking up our, um, our rocks as we're moving along here. So that we're able to throw them again. They don't do much, but they do something. There we go. We get 90 XP from that. Nice. And we also get to pick up his gear. So we got our rock and our knife back. So we're going to give our legionary shield to him. And we're going to give the legionary spear to our rogue. And we're going to equip that spear on that hand. We're going to equip our uh, legionary shield here. And we're going to give our torch to our... Oh yeah, we did move that. That's right. We'll give our torch to our... Uh, can this guy do dual hand? Yes, he can. But it's not really... It's not beneficial to do deal hands, dual hand since you can only attack with one hand at a time, I believe. Uh, attack power. Let me just compare. 
Oh, this dagger is much better, isn't it? 11-7 and 9-2. That's, yeah, that's much better. Let's go with that. So we have a dagger and a shield. And we've got our minotaur holding our torch. And we have the spear now, so we can have our rogue attack from the back row, which is very, very nice. And he came from over here. And that caught us a little bit off guard, but that's all right. Just looking around, looking around. I think we're very, very close to the end of this level, and I think that's where we're going to end the video. That'll be a good introductory video into our descent into madness. So we'll give that to him. Let's see. Is this a closed door? Does not look like... Oh, I see a switch. Press that switch, and I think actually there's one more switch. Yes, there is. And secret area now we have a wand so we will give that to our mage and that replace and we and we don't have access to a glowing hand you'll see but the wand actually acts as a glowing hand so that's great and the wand gives uh, plus five to energy and we do need spellcraft one but it's great we get more energy which is awesome and we also have a scroll here which i'll give to this guy uh, and it's just a little explanation scroll this magical staff is a powerful weapon when wielded by a potent mage and let's look around for switches. Nope, uh, everything looks good. Yep, and we have another scroll here. We'll give it to our maids and read it. Doors of iron. Okay, great rewards can be found behind these doors. The doors we just opened, that is. To gain access, look carefully for, for small details and use your wits, i.e. pixel hunt. Uh, and we actually, did we? I remember back in that room with those, those um, green guys those plant guys I was gonna talk about rest and because we were kind of low in health and energy but health and energy naturally restore themselves over time as long as your food bar is in the green or yellow um, so we actually did just naturally regain all our health and energy but if we wanted to quickly regain it we could hit R and wait a little while and if you are in a room I'm not sure about respawns yet but I think if you're in a room where where enemies originate they could respawn uh, I'll have to experiment with that a little bit and be careful with that by uh, pressing F5 to quick save. Now this is a glowing thing that is explained on this scroll, so we'll open that up. Now it's a crystal of life. We touch it to regain health and restore life. Now we are at max health and life right now, so I think a good strategy would be to leave this alone. And if we ever need it in the future, we can come back. We can uh, we can traverse back through the dungeon, back through the, dun the dungeon levels, and get back here and use that if we really need it. Although there is rest, so and actually our torch just went out, so we're gonna throw that on the ground and use a new one. Um, well, we don't need it, so there's no harm in just leaving it for now. And now we have our scroll of poison cloud, and this is uh, you can see the rune there, and but we do need earth magic three, and we don't have any earth magic right now. But that's something to consider in the future. And now we have reached the end of the dungeon. So we're going to go down. I think that's where we're going to end this episode. All right. So let's take a step in. We are on level two, Old Tunnels. And in our next video, we will continue on through Mount Grimrock to our hopeful, eventual freedom and not eventual horrific death. I hope you will continue on with me next time.